Now in this section we will be discussing on the load balancing feature in EHRB. Like load balancing is a method of sharing the load between multiple links. Let's take an example, you got two possible routes. So I got two possible routes here, you can see the diagram from here to here. So if you want to go from router 1 to router 3, there are two possible routes. Either you can go via router 2 or we can go via router 4. So now uh, whenever EHRP or RIP, let's say if I'm using RIP protocol, RIP version 2, RIP calculate the best route based on the hop counts. So if I go from here, there are two hops. And if I go from here, it, it will be two hops. So I got two routes and both are actually the best routes. So in this kind of scenarios, it will do something called load balancing. So load balancing is a method of sharing the load between both the links. So it's going to send the traffic from here as well as here. So some packets from the first path and some packets from the other path. So we call it as load balancing. And there are two types of load balancing can be done. We have something called equal cost load balancing. So when you say equal cost, we are assuming that we got two routes or more than two routes. Let's say I got three routes and the cost on one route is 1000 and the second route is 1000 and the cost on the third route is 2000. Now in this, the least cost is the best route, which means 1000 is the least. But as of now, we got two routes. It's going to load balance between both the routes. So we call this as equal cost load balancing where the sharing, the ba load balancing happens between two routes, which has the same cost. And by default, RIP version 2 supports this, but the calculation is uh, based on hop counts. EHRP also supports equal cost load balancing and OSPF also supports equal cost load balancing. So this is something by default, every protocol supports, which means whenever they come across a scenario where you have two or more than two possible routes, it's going to do load balancing automatically by default. But the, the feature in EHRP is, EHRP is the only protocol which not only supports equal cost, it also supports unequal cost load balancing. Now unequal cost means, let's take an example, the cost from here to here is 1500. We got a cost of 1000, we got a cost of 1500, and we got a cost of 2000. So which is the best route here? Now in this scenario, the best route will be 1000. This is the best route. And the reason is it is having the least cost. But if I want, if I want, I want to do load balancing between these two, two routes, even though they are not equal. The cost of the first route is 1000. The cost on the second route is 1500. Even though they are not equal, but still I want to use both the routes. I want to do load balancing between these two. And this is what we call as unequal cost load balancing. And this is also supported in EHRP. That EHRP is the only protocol which supports unequal cost load balancing. But again, it will not do automatically. We have to do it manually. Manually, we need to do it by using something called variance. So we'll get into that more in detail as we go ahead. So let's, let's get started with some basic lab. So what I'm doing is I'm getting into my lab here. I got four routers and all the four routers are using the same IPv6 addressing, whatever I'm using. So the first step, I'm going to do the basic configuration, basic EHRP advertisements, advertising all the routers inside your EHRP 100. So I need to have two routes for testing purpose. As of now, you can see this route is having 1.5 Mbps, 1544 kbps. 1544 kbps, 1544 kbps, and 1544 kbps. So all the links are having the same cost. First, let's configure EHRP and verify these things. So I'll go to router 1. I'll say router EHRP 100, advertising the LAN and the WAN interfaces. On the router 1, I got 10 dot network, 1 dot network, and 4 dot network. So I'm going to say 10 dot network, 1 dot network, and four dot network. So if you want to disable uh, auto summary, you can disable it. The best practice. So enable router EHRP 100, and then we'll set 20 dot network in the LAN on the router two. We got 20 dot network, two dot network, and one dot network. So I'm going to advertise the WAN interfaces two and one. Similar way, we'll also configure router 3, router EHRP 100, 
and then I'm going to advertise a network 30 dot network in the LAN 3 dot network and 2 dot network advertising the LAN interface and two WAN interfaces similar way I'm going to do the same thing on the router 4 router EHRP 100 network uh, let's say 40 dot network in the LAN and then 4 dot network and 3 dot network so once you do any configuration uh, in EHRP or any other any OSP protocol the first thing will verify the neighborship so we'll, we'll try to verify the neighborship on the router 1 I should see two neighbors so let's verify that on the router 1 I should see two neighbors so let's go to router 1 so on the router 1 how to verify the neighborship what's the command so we need to say show IP EHRP neighbors you can see there are two neighbors I got 4.4.4.1 that is router 4 and 1.1.1.1 and both the neighbors are up and then we can also verify the same thing on the router 3 also router 3 also I should see two neighbors that is router 2 this is router 2 and router 4 so the next thing will verify the routing table if I give show IP route EHRP now I can see all the routes here you can see I'm receiving the networks 40 door network here and then 30 door network all the networks are received but if you see 3 dot network, I'm, in, I'm able to see two routes in my routing table here. You can see via 4.4.4.1 and via 1.1.1.2. And both the routes are installed in the routing table. You can see both the routes are present in the routing table. And this is going to confirm that it is going to do load balancing. So it's doing something called load balancing. And the reason it is doing is the cost on both the sides, it is same. If you see the cost here, the cost to go via this route is 2684416 and via this route is also 2684416 and the reason is you have a same bandwidth here 1544 all are serial links with a default bandwidth parameter so they are having the default bandwidth and default delays I did not change anything so it's going to do load balancing automatically on both the routes even if you verify show IP EHRP topology you will see to reach 30 dot network there are two successors so there are two successor nothing but two best routes and the feasible distance that is the total cost and here you can see in the brackets here the first value represents your feasible distance this this first number you can see these values the first value represents your feasible distance and the second value represents your advertised distance so the same thing what we discussed in our previous classes so for every network you have a feasible distance and advertised distance and as of now you can see there are two possible routes and both are having the same feasible distance or the same cost here so that's the reason both are used in the routing table but again if you have first best second best third best you will see all the all the best routes learned from the neighbor inside your uh, topology table so you'll see something called passive here passive represents it's a working condition there is something called active also we'll see uh, much more there is something called stack in active state probably we'll be getting into that we'll see that uh, in a separate session so now if you want to verify you can also trace from router 1 to router 3 if I trace you can see the packet goes via both the sides so it's it's like a confirmation that it is using both the links the basic thing whenever you see two routes installed in the routing table that's again the confirmation that it is going to use both the routes and the reason is uh, both are having the equal cost so by default you know every protocol not only I'm talking about EHRP it can be RIP also if you are using EHRP or OSPF protocol every protocol will do equal cost load balancing by default so you don't need to do anything whenever a router realizes that there are two possible routes which are having the equal cost so it will do load balancing automatically so how to verify so if you want to do unequal cost load balancing then that is something you have to do manually so let's let's try to understand how to do unequal load balancing in this scenario 